Okay, today we're going to look at some stuff that's practical. All of us are going to have to deal with interest, buying a house, car, whatever. <clears throat> Let's go back to the eighth grade. Simple interest. Simple interest says the interest is the principal times the rate times the time. So if I invest $1,000 at 6% for three years, $1,000, 6%, three years, it makes me $180 of interest. So at the end of that three years, I got $1,180. Now, let's look at the idea of compounding. We do it a year at a time. The first year, my 6% for one year is going to make me $60. So I got $60 to put back with my 1000 So I got $1,060 at 6% for one year. And that's going to make me $63.60. <clears throat> I add that $63.60 back. So now I have $1,123.60 at 6% for one year, and it makes me $67.42. And I add that back to what I had, and I end up with $1,191.06. So the $1,191.06 is what I had at the end of three years. But when I did it for simple interest, I had 1180. And you say, what's the difference? Well, the difference is we made money on the interest that they paid us. The good part about it is that we don't have to do it step by step. We got a formula. The formula says the amount is the principal time one plus the yearly rate divided by how often it's compounded and it's in times the number of years. So in our problem, we had a thousand dollars at six percent and we were doing it annually. So I in was one and then I got three times one and you pump this into your calculator and you get eleven ninety one oh two. Now the reason is not exactly the same as my eleven ninety one oh six because we did some rounding off. So keep in mind that your compound interest it means that you're getting interest on the money that you've been paid. Okay. So let's take that thousand dollars at six percent and let's compound it quarterly for three years. Well, quarterly says I'm gonna do it four times a year. So N is four. And keep in mind that this is that three years that we're still working with. And you put this in your calculator and it gives you 1195.62. I want to caution you when you're raising it to this power right here, make sure that you use parentheses correctly. Now, let's take that same thousand dollars and let's invest it at 12 uh, at 6 percent, but let's do it monthly, 12 times a year. And when you do that, you get 1196.66. So look, we made maybe a dollar more by compounding it monthly. That sounds pretty good. So let's compound it daily then. And when I compound it daily, and you only get 1197.20. So all of a sudden, I didn't make that much more money by compounding it daily. There isn't the compounding, the more often you compound it will give you more money, but there is a limit to it. <clears throat> and this limit is going to be done with this little formula right here. Now, on the next page, I'm going to show you a little bit about E. But E says that we're compounding it continuously. And how often continuous is, I don't know. It just depends on how fast your computer is. But when you put this into the calculator, you get 1197.22, and that's pretty close to that 1197.20 that we got when we did it daily. So a big question is, where does this thing E come from? Well, many centuries ago, some real mathematicians, they took a look at this right here. If you got 1 plus 1 over N to the N power, let's make us a chart. Let's let N be 1. Well, when you let N be one, my L comes out to be two. And I put this into the calculator. When you let N be 100, 
my L come out to be 2.705. When I let N be 1,000, it's 2.7169. When I let it be 10,000, it's 2.7181. And if you'll hit the E button on your calculator, do Shift LN, you will find that E is 2.71828 out to Notice that E never repeats. It is always continuous. It doesn't repeat. So what it boils down to then is that the original formula that we had, 1 plus R over N to the NT, that has the same pattern that this had up here. So the limit of that expression was E. And that's where you get the little form, uh, formula from. The good part about it, all we got to do is just take each of these formulas and use them as necessary. If it's continuous, you're going to always do each formula. If it is compounded so many times per year, you're going to use this formula right here. All right, let's take a practical problem. How long will it take to double our money if compounded quarterly at 8%? Well, the only thing impractical about this is that you're not going to find any 8% interest rate. I use that so I can make my arithmetic easy. So we're going to double our money. So if P is my original amount, 2 times P is what we want to get. Well, this is an equation that P divides out. So I got 2 is equal to 1.02 to the 4T power. Now we're in trouble because 2 and 1.02, I can't get the same base, so I got to take the log of both sides. Log of this side, this is a power, so it comes out front. 4t times the log of this. Now, keep in mind that this log of 1.02 is just a number. So to solve for t, I divide both sides by the 4 and this. And when I do that, I come out with a nice little number of almost 9 years. So at 8%, you could double your money in nine years. Don't hold your breath. You're not going to find anybody except maybe a loan shark that might pay you 8% or might charge you 8%. OK, this is enough for you to get those problems. And I do realize the problem that he's going to have you work at your homework, they're going to be a little bit more complicated than this, but this is the idea of it. And be sure that you're going to be ready to take this test Thursday. Good luck.